Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is John. Uh, I'll be a speaker for a moment. Just a short period of time, I won't be before you know. I'll just like to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm new here in North Carolina. I moved from Pennsylvania. Um, I'm a shop owner, I have my own business. I've owned my own business for the last several years. I've owned four businesses, four barbershops, even the second salon. Um, I'm currently a master barber, and I enjoy what I do. I moved to North Carolina uh, probably about a year ago. Um, I've been in the barber business for about 13 years, and the last eight of which I've owned my own. So I say that to say that I once too was a troubled youth. I had issues. I had problems, I had things that I had to deal with at home, at school, but I pushed through it. Sports was my outlet. Many of us need an outlet and sports was mine. I played football and I enjoyed playing football. Some of us may not have an outlet and these are some of the reasons to why we may do some of the things that we do. That's not so positive. I say that to say we all make mistakes in our time in our lives and we, we just have to move forward after making mistakes. As I got a little older, barber became my outlet. So as I chose to barber with my hair, I actually fell in love with it. As I see older gentlemen in the neighborhood who were wearing barber shops, cut hair, I just said I wanted to do that. So that's exactly what I did. So I picked up the trade. I started actually I started out cutting hair probably when I was about twelve years old. It became taxing because I wanted to play. So I used to just cut my friend's hair and then that was it. <laughs> but I used to have a line, all my friends wanted to get their hair cut. So then I started cutting the hair and then I wanted to play. So then I, I went away from it. And then football became my life. And now I'm back to barbering once again. So barbering to me is one of the biggest outlets that I have. I used to use, reading was one of my things. I love reading. Reading was an outlet, escape, get my mind away from things and problems that I was going through. But once I became a barber and started owning my own business, I like I like the freedom of it. I like owning my own. I didn't want to work for a nine to five. I didn't want to work and have someone tell me what to do as far as how I made money. The structure and everything. So I had to go through the process of learning to accept people telling me what to do. It wasn't always the easiest, it wasn't always the best, but my freedom became when I when I became a barber of my own business owner. So at the same time, I say that to you all, we all have structure. We all need structure. It's very important to our lives. We might buck against it, we might not want to, but we have to. In doing so, when when people are speaking to you in a structured manner, I don't believe that you should take it so personal. We fight against it because we want to do our own thing. And doing our own thing isn't always the best for us because we don't know everything. So with that being said, when you're in environments where people such as these young men and women that are trying to give you structure, don't take it so personal. It's not such a bad thing. We don't do it all. We don't know it all. They make mistakes, we make mistakes, but together we can make it work. I enjoy barbering. I make mistakes over and over again when it comes to cutting people's hair. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn the structure. I had to, I had to be taught. You know, <laughs> time and time again, the mistakes happen. But I got over, I persevered, I made it through. So it makes me a full-time business owner to the day. You got to dig down and see what's good for you all. What helps you through? What pushes you? What drives you? What's your motivation? I'm sure there's things inside of us that have to come out and, and be developed and nurtured, but you have to accept the structure part of it first. So my first business, I started it probably about eight years ago. It was tough. I started out on my own, went into my little savings, I opened up a barber shop, put my money forth, tried to make it work. It was hard. I couldn't find the help. People didn't know me as a barber. So they was like, I'm not letting you cut my hair. 
and rightfully so at that time because I just jumped into it for the most part. As a, as a young adult, I just jumped into it. But even before that, before I became a bar, I actually went away to college. I played football. I don't know if I, like I told you, I uh, played football, but I, I, I didn't get a scholarship. Even though I thought I was going to be the next star running back, you know, in the league. But it didn't happen, you know. So we all got some drinks. You know, any yeah. any place work? Yeah, what's your position? Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nah, I used to. What was your position? Obviously. Why are we seeing this stuff? Anyone else place works? Any other type of track? You fast? That's it? No one? No. That's all right. That's a, that was a good outlet, though, right? You enjoyed it? Yeah. Huh? It was fun. It was fun, right? Yeah, sports is always good. So, you got they, when I went to school, when I went away to school to to the university, I, I thought I would, you know, be the next one back. I thought that, was, but that wasn't it though. It didn't happen. I didn't predict the scholarship didn't come through. They didn't want to. They didn't want to pay me the money that I thought that I was going to get from the from being recruited. And once I got there, it went a whole other way. But the education was the important part. The education was where it was at. You need your education more importantly than anything. Because like you said, I, I thought I was gonna be you know, in the NFL somewhere, but instead <laughs> I'm a business owner cut head. So the education is very important. How many of you guys read all the time? All the time? All the time? Good stuff, good stuff. Good stuff, that's a good thing. Don't stop that because that, that's going to further you every time. The education, the reading, the fundamentals is going to push you outside the limits of wherever you are. Imagination can go to the nation and your education. What are you going to do when you grow up? Pharmacy. Pharmacy? What are you going to do? Firefighter. Fire, fire. I'm sorry? Firefighter. Fire, fire. Good stuff. Fire. Artist, good stuff. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, what type? Any type, any particular type? Club. Club, good stuff. How about you? Real estate. Real estate, you want to own land? Yeah, I own my house. Property, good stuff. How about you? Not yet. Not yet. That's how you have time. How are we? 14. 14, good stuff. You have time. How about you? I want to be a lawyer. A lawyer, good stuff. Why do you want to be a lawyer? Because I can argue. You can argue. You can argue. I can argue my point. Bro. Get your point, across. That's a good point. You can get your point across. But see, but you have a mindset of saying you're figuring out early to what your strong points are. Yeah. You can get your point across and you figure out lawyer, you argue, you get your point across and you can move strong in that in that area. That's good. But that's a positive. You learn the positive in what you do. And that's what we need to do. You need to understand what's your strengths in the situation that you're facing. Whatever it is that you want to do, you have to know your strengths. What's your strengths? In the field that you want to go in, which is strong. <laughs> How about you? You want to hear? That's okay. How about you? Mm -hmm. So there's no wrong answer because you're still young, so you have time to develop. No? No, no. How about you? Mm -hmm. Money, that's your strength? Yeah. <laughs> that's all you see is green, huh? That's all I see, and that's what I strive for. That's what you strive for? Faith. Faith, good stuff. Spiritual. That's the foundation. That's good. That's a good foundation. Yeah, faith. That's good. I mean, we, just like you said, faith. We have to have faith in, in, in something. You know, I can't do religion which one way or the other, but you have to have faith in something. Believe that you can make it work and make it happen. So I, I say that when it comes to me opening a barbershop, I had faith. I sat there and said, you know, I can do this. So I went from one to the next. To the next and to the next, but each time I got better at it. And each, each of us is going to make these mistakes to get better at what, what it is that we want to do. And you got to learn to accept the mistakes that you make to, to make yourself better. But we're going to make plenty of them. We all make, make mistakes. You understand? Know and you can't beat yourself up over every mistake you make because it's going to happen time and time again. How are you? 15. You got a long life to live. So you're going to make plenty of mistakes along this road. But you gotta learn to accept the mistakes you make, and you gotta learn. You gotta learn to listen to those before you that made mistakes. Did that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So when people are telling you about don't do this and don't do that, do you think they're just telling you just to 
hear themselves speak or because of the mistakes that they had made. Mm -hmm. they say they made. Absolutely. We all make them. Yeah. We all make them. So I'm 42 years old, four time living zone. I have three kids. I have a 25, a 16, and a 17 year old. These are the very things that I tell them as well. My son went away to the baby. He didn't really want to go to college. He didn't think college was for him. And college is not for everybody. But he, he went away to the Navy. He's been at six years now. When he's done, it'll be six and a half when he's done. My daughter's are in high school, I'm through 12th grade. These are the same exact things I would tell them if they were sitting in front of me today. So anything I tell you, I would tell my own kids that the mistakes you make is not the end of the world. It's not the first and it's not the last. As long as you push forward, Keep your head on straight and understand that you're going to make them, but you can overcome your mistakes. It just makes you a better person. A lot of mistakes I made, I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't made them. Am I proud of all the mistakes? Not at all. But it's part of it made who I am today. It made me able to tell you that I made mistakes now. I'm an overcomer as well. So don't ever let nobody tell you that because of the mistakes you made, you can never bounce back from them. Of course you can. Because the same person that's saying that is the same person that made mistakes as well. You believe that? Absolutely. So what I want you all to do is to dig down deep inside, understand that I made mistakes, obviously, but I can move forward past it. I can learn not to do it again. But you got to change your mindset. You got to change your thinking. Because a lot of what we think leads us to where we are. So if you don't change how you think about a situation, you always going to find yourself in the same situation. You're going to find yourself over and over again repeating the same mistakes because you never changed your mind. Someone ever tell you to do something and you said, I'm not doing it? Yeah. Right? And you said, I'm not doing it, and then realize you should have did it anyway. Yeah. It would have saved you a whole lot of time and headache all the time, right? So what, what did you get out of it? Absolutely. You have to go through it anyway, right? But you don't always have to go through to learn from that mistake because nine times out of ten, the person that's telling you made a mistake for you. Parents, when they say, don't go down there, don't go down that road, don't go down there, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You ran down the area, right? You got to keep on running, you got yourself right in trouble, right? I said, only if I miss it. That goes for me as a grown man. Someone tell me something. You know, sometimes I have to think about like, oh, I'm a grown man. Why don't I listen to this? Because we need structure. Because obviously it needs to be learned in that situation when someone else speaks to you. Because that was eventual. It doesn't make them right and you wrong. It's just a, a lesson that they've learned just passing it on. Because one was, well, I shouldn't ask that question, but there's mistakes that we make. Uh, and then we look back on them and we say we wish we hadn't made them. Right? So when you make your mistakes and you learn from your mistake, does that help or hurt you? I should have said make a bad mistake. That's what I should call it. It can help. So the mistakes that we make aren't all bad. It's something to learn from. I first up in my first, when I was my first barber shop, you know, other barbers, other owners that said to me, well, you know, you should or shouldn't do that, but you shouldn't do that. I didn't listen. The first one didn't do so well. It did good enough because I was able to run it and sustain it and build a good clientele, but I made a lot of mistakes. If I only had I listened to someone that did it before me, I would have been fine, but I didn't listen. I had to learn the hard way. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I just try I just try to take it for what it is. If somebody has something to offer, it doesn't make them right and you wrong, but if they have a, a bit of advice to offer, just take it for what it's worth. And, and think about it. Is, it. is it really worth me listening and taking from it, or should I just throw it away because it's no big deal? A wise man can teach you a lot of things, but also a foolish man. You can learn what to do from a wise man. And a foolish man, you can learn what not to do. That makes sense. Because mm -hmm. a foolish man, you're saying go run, run in traffic and get hit by a car. You say, well, I'm not going to run in traffic. I'm not going to get hit by a car. Right? 
So a foolish person, you can learn something from it as well. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I just want to just try to encourage you all to just keep moving forward. We all have setbacks in life. We all go through things that, that we're not particularly proud of. We all go through things that we wish we could have done better. And I myself speak from my point of view of there's things that I've done I wish I could have done over and done better. But today is a day, it's a new day. Today is a new day to make things better. You get a brand new start every single day. Wake up, thank the good Lord for what he's given you and move forward. It's a brand new start every day you wake up. But just don't repeat them the same mistake to get you where you are every single time. So I don't really have much more to say. I just want to keep encouraging you all to keep doing better. Keep striving for more. Keep your heads up and understand that you can always do something do better and make a better um, position for yourself in life. No matter the mistakes you made in the past, yesterday is gone, you can't get it back. Today's a new day. So today, today is the start of a new beginning for all of us. And I'd like to keep encouraging you all to keep doing the right thing. Do the best you can in any situation you find yourself in. You have any questions to me? Yeah. What's, what's the most fulfilling thing about Um, Outside of the pay, one of the most fulfilling things about bar, barbering outside of the pay is the interaction I get with people on a daily basis. The interaction for me is, is probably priceless because I see all walks of life. I see everybody. I see people come, they, they ask questions. I get a chance to talk to the youth. I get a chance to talk to whoever's in my chair. So all walks of life, that's probably one of the uh, best fulfilling things, the interaction with people. Where is your shops located at? Well, I just moved to um, North Carolina. So the, the three that I had in Pennsylvania, I sold before I moved here. So now I have one here in Concord. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, what are you up to with your license in uh, North Carolina? Um, <laughs> I had, to, um, I had to actually take my, my license over. I, I was, I'm actually a licensed barber teacher in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm actually a, a barber manager in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm also a barber in Pennsylvania. So I had to, once I transferred over to the rest of the I had to take the test all over again to get my license. And it's uh, 15, 28 hours, 1,528 hours in the state of North Carolina. I'm the type of, I'm the individual that, that once I start a thing, I complete, but I never stay stagnant at the same level. So at first I, I, I achieved my, my barber's license, then I achieved my manager's license, then I achieved my teacher's license. So there's always the next level you all can go to, no matter what in life, you can always go to the next level, but understand there's going to be a fight on every level. And it was a fight each and every time I went to the next level. <laughs> Good fight, but it was a fight. Mm -hmm. You go to barber school? I did go to barber school. I went to barber school back in Pennsylvania. And then the hours is um, 12.50. I just had to get 12.50 hours in Pennsylvania, but 15.28 here in North Carolina. Yeah, barber school is pretty fun, though. I like barber school. Which so way did you work? Uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Right outside, all my barber shops was outside of Philadelphia, though. So that's where I'm from. But now I need to start. Mm -hmm. And then how I didn't get to start. Which get my license or the bar. Um in school. You get it right. Or the barber shop. Yeah. yeah, it was it was it was it was tough. But uh, the challenge was good. It was it was able I was able to keep pushing forward. You know, I didn't want to just stay stagnant, I just want to keep pushing forward and not allow no one to stop me. I have a I have a mentality of I'm gonna go get it, but I can show you better than I can tell you. And that's not a that's not a bad thing, but you gotta understand those of us that are that way are strong minded. And sometimes it works against us. Because you think that you can just do whatever you want and you really can't. So you gotta be able to humble yourself in that to to receive criticism, constructive criticism from it, people, those that are around you. So it, it was a challenge, but I pushed through. So Okay, they have a bunch of questions out there. Okay. At what age can you get your barber license, and do you have to, and do you have to have it to work at your shop? <laughs> um, you have to. You can be sixteen with a GED or diploma, but minimal sixteen. And yes, you do have to have 
license to work in my shop. Uh, students ask, how long does it take to get the barber license? Um, it takes 1,528 hours, just about a year's time, if you're full time. What university did he go to and what did he major in? Um, I went to two. I went to um, Shippensburg University, which was the first, where I played football. I transferred to Cheney University, which is at HBCU. Students ask where you work from, Pennsylvania. We already got that. What is the name of your shop? Uh, Blessings Family Hacker. Students ask, and what is the process? Um, Mr. Coven, is that the process for what? Getting the barber license? We'll come back to him when we type. Okay. How much do you charge for a shape up? <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> Somebody come to get a shape up. They want to know what your teaching license is in. Uh, Barbara. Okay. In the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm in the process now of getting my instructors here in North Carolina. Today was first class. Right. <laughs> Students asked, "Are you hiring, and what is the process?" I am hiring, um, but you. The minimal required requirement is to have a Harvard license. I'm always willing to train so that's fine. Would you hire ex-cons if they are licensed? Yes, I will. What drew you to the profession? Independence. Students wants to know, how does having a business affect your tax returns? How does it? Oh, man. Um, it's a it's a up and down side, but that's good. That's a teacher question, but it's okay. <laughs> 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 that's a teacher's question. Um, it, uh, you just got to be ready for for that end of the year. You should pay quarterly. I tell you that I learned that the hard way. I mean, I, you guys may not understand that one, but I should have been paying quarterly. So now, you know, at the end of the year, I owe a good ten thousand dollars in taxes. So. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with the name of your shop? Um, I was reading reading the Bible one day, and I was um, thinking about reading the blessings of the Lord. And, I, and at that time, I've been through a lot of things in my life, and it was truly a blessing that I was able to actually open my shop and not one for. Actually, it's a blessing for me to be standing here talking to you all. So I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how much do you charge for a Yeah. You gonna come work? You free. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I uh, in my lifetime, I've, I've really been through some things in my, in my lifetime. To even to even be here, to be honest with you, um, it's by the grace of God that I'm actually here. To be totally honest with you, I really don't know how deep we can get in conversation, but it's actually a, a blessing to be standing. Here. You can go as deep as you need to. Um, okay, um, well, I'll tell you this much here, um, at the age of, at the age of 19, um, I had borrowed a friend's car and I, um, I was giving my sister a ride and when I was giving my sister a ride, um, I seen, I, the car that didn't have matching plates to the car, so the cops were behind me. And as the cops were behind me, I took off because I knew that the car wasn't um, registered properly. Had a gun in the car. I took off, um, ran from the cops, turned the corner. A lady was pushing a stroller across the street with a baby in it. Just missed the baby, the car spun out. The lady walks across the street, she made it, heard all the screaming, no one got hurt, but I should have been in prison. I happened to get away. Um, went away to college, that was, on a, that was on a break. Went away to college, came home, and then I, uh, I had a felony. So I couldn't really get a, a real job in, my, in any profession that I wanted to get in because of the fact that I had a felony. So the felony really pushed me back. It really, it really started to grow up in what I wanted to do in school. So I was discouraged, so I went back to the streets. So I went back in the streets. 
as soon as I was selling drugs in the streets. Wasn't proud of it, but I felt as if that's what I needed to do. Got into all kinds of fights, street fights, street brawls, everything. By the grace of God, four of the five of the times that I almost killed somebody, it was nothing but the grace of God that allowed me not to. Two at one time, all over the streets, street money, street. Squeeze the trigger in somebody's face, chase one, squeeze the trigger in someone else's face, and no more bullets. God spared my life then. Another time, I was selling drugs, I gave a lady heroin. I thought that in my mind, somebody expressed to me that if you give someone heroin, you have them hooked for the rest of their life. Being young, stupid, almost cut this lady. The lady got rushed to the hospital, she almost died. I see the lady when I was home, I seen it, I seen her week before I moved here. By the grace of God, she didn't die. So my young daughter, my son, so I look at him in the face and I say to him, we almost didn't meet. Because if I had went to jail for the rest of my life, I wouldn't have kids. So it's truly a blessing to why I'm here. So I hope and I pray that the mistakes you make today stops in a negative way. Keep you, open your eyes to understand there's more to life than the right now moment. It's more to life than just doing what you want to do at that time. 14, 15, 16 year old, you got an entire life to live. Your life is, didn't start and it's not going to end at 15. So if you make the mistake today because you big and bad to do what you wanted to do, do you understand how you're stunting the growth of endless countless blessings in front of you? You can be whatever you want. Whatever you want to do, you can do. But the streets will tear you up. Drugs will tear you up. And you know the sad part about it? <clears throat> it doesn't give back. It just takes. It takes your happiness. It takes your freedom. It takes your family. It takes. It takes. It takes. It takes but you can't get it back. I was going to ask what caused you to stop selling drugs. What caused me to stop selling drugs was when I had an aha moment, sitting in the jail cell, and I realized I made the dumbest mistake. See, this cop said to me one day, you know what he said to me? He said, you know what? You probably did this a million times and got away with it. And he was absolutely right. I got away with it so much. I thought I would never get caught. And then what happened? Got caught. And I looked around, looked from the inside of the cell out, and looked at the bars that I was holding, and said, there's no way possible I can spend the rest of my life like this. There's no way possible I'm going to stay in this place and stay stagnant and not do something with myself. And I sat there and I asked the Lord, I said, if you give me a chance, to get out of this, I would never return to this. I would never return to it. I mean, you know what happened? He put me through the test. You know what the test was? My youngest was two, year, two years old at the time. I went homeless. I went homeless with a, with a two-year-old and vowed to myself that I would never go back to jail. I would never sell another drug in my life. I would never do it again. I vowed I wouldn't do it. So I went through the test, homeless, well, can you imagine when a young baby, two years old, going from house to house to house, no one wanted you? It was all good when you were spending money. It was all good when you had money in your Everybody, you know, you go back to minutes. But I had a two-year-old, homeless. I'm getting chicken fingers in a hoagie roll just to make sure she can eat. And I'm eating the end of the hoagie roll because she was eating. She would never, she never knew it, but I did. The streets don't give back. Crimes committed, they don't give back. You go rob a bank or steal a car, you think the car owner say, here, take the car. Or you rob the bank and, they, and you steal their money, say, here, take this money. They don't give back. What it does is give, it gives you a lesson of life of saying that you can't do what you want to do. 
that's where the structure comes into play. You need structure. You need to understand that it's laws, it's, it's, it's rules for a reason. When you look at that person, oh, he a square, he, he a nut, he, he a cornball dude. He very well may be, but he's not, he's not in jail spending that time because he chose not to commit a crime. He can be corny as he may be, but he's going to the corner store. He can be as corny as he want to be, but he's walking down the street, he's going to his own kitchen, his own bedroom. He's living his own life, as corny as he may be. I take corny over at any day, any day, as opposed to standing inside of a box, having my, my family come visit me and locked, up. locked up and guaranteed half of them don't even come visit. All this TV fantasy stuff that you all live by, this music that we listen to, I mean, come on, that's fantasy. That's not reality. It becomes your reality once you take it in and you believe it. It's your reality now, but it's not there. They just take your money. That's nothing. They take your money and not giving back. They pumping this into your head that this is the way to live. That's foolish. That's false thinking. It's false belief. I'm here to tell you it's false. It's false. It's false. Don't believe it. I'm telling you, it's just, I gave the game up because I wanted my freedom. I wanted to raise my kids. I vowed never to go back to jail doing foolishness. By the grace of God, I'm standing ahead. I'm a four time business owner. And none of the drug money got me there. I struggled. I fought. I worked jobs. I just told you the good side of it. I scraped. I scrounged to get that money up, not to go back to jail. It was presented to me. It was right there. Oh, man, I remember what you used to do. Do you want to do it again? Not at all. Why? I have a brighter feature of it. The aha moment, the light went off. I like walking down the street. I like being able to drive in my car and have license. Listen, listen, to, listen to the simple things. Just to have a regular driver's license. Just to be able to walk down the street and not have a problem. Not looking over my shoulder, sleeping with both shoes on. I used to sleep with one shoe on. I was at the window 24 7, wondering who it was. Wondering if some bad drug transaction is that coming back to haunt me. This reality. But at the end of the day, my, both my parents worked. Two parents in a home, both of them working, both of them. Good jobs. My dad busts his tail. And my father wasn't even my father. He was my stepfather who raised six kids that wasn't even his, who busts his tail every single day. It was a blizzard one, one winter. He walked. I seem like forever, just to get some groceries to bring us back for kids that wasn't even his. He showed me where the real man was. Not that guy on the corner that's sitting there making me believe that that's reality. This man busts his tail. At the end of the day, you got to make a sound decision, a responsible, mature decision that you're going to do the right thing. But the choice is yours. You have a choice. You come to the fork in the road, you have a choice to make. You got to make a sound and mature decision to what you want to do with yourself. You have endless and countless blessings waiting, opportunities waiting. Juveniles, you right now, y'all can be done with this. I don't know what took any of you to get here or anybody out there, but I'm just telling you the mistakes you made yesterday. Today's a new day. You don't have to repeat that. You don't have to repeat. Dad's mistakes, big brother mistakes, all the mistakes, homie on the block, whatever. You don't have to repeat that. They did it for you. You did it for yourself. You know what this is like. You know what this is like. I heard, I heard a young man say to you, get in line. How'd that make you feel? Get in line, like, get in line. Because you have to follow their rules now. They tell you when to go to bed. They tell you when to eat. They tell you what to do. Do you like that? No. Not at all. And, I, and I'm not comparing you to my dog, God knows. I tell my dog, sit down. I tell my dog, get in, the, get in his cage. I tell him, I feed him. I let him out to the bathroom. You're better than that. You're better than that. You're better than that. Do you understand that? You're better than that. I don't care what got you here. You're better than that. But you got to believe that you're better than that. This is temporary. You're only here for a matter of time. But reality won't hit when, you, when, you, when you're on the other side of, these, of the wall and, and you got to live life. 
real world. The real world. Are you going to repeat the same mistakes to get you back in? Maybe, of course, it's not here. Think about it. You're better than that. You got to value yourself that much more to do that much greater. If you don't value yourself, what are you going to do? You just want to repeat yourself. You can go back to the same stuff because you won't feel like I'm worth nothing. But you are. You're better. I'm here to tell you, you're better than that. You're better than that. I can't drop it home enough. You're better than that. I'm telling you, you're better than that. Prove it to yourself that you're better than that. You don't have nothing, nothing to prove to anyone else but the person in the mirror. My life was so bad at one point. God is my witness. I used to brush my teeth looking down because I didn't like the person I seen in the mirror. Think about that. I used to stare myself in my eyes and, and was disgusted. It took me probably the last, I, I still deal with it time to time. I get emotional when I think about it. Brushing my teeth, looking at my own self in the mirror. Disgusting. I'm better, of course, now because it's far past me. But at the time, I couldn't stand looking at myself in the eyes. Because I know what I just did. The hatred. I know what I just did. The families are just to help destroy. All right, what if you like, you want to change, but you got a grudge against my girl? You got to learn to forget that. You gotta learn, don't you want to be forgiven for the things that you've done? How many mistakes have you made? Just. Oh, a lot. Okay, now have, have they forgot, forgave you? Majority of the people have forgave your yeah. mistakes. But you can't forgive people for them. You got to forgive people for yourself. That's the only way you're going to get past it. And some things are deeper than others. Some things hurt. Some things cut to the core. I, I get that. But for your for your sense of sanity and your sense of mind, you got to you got to let it go. You got to let it go. If you hold on to it, you'll be mad for the rest of your life. Now that stunts your group. Now your happiness is shot every time. It's like a light switch. Every time you see that person, they playing with your emotions, on and off. That's too much power of me. Think about it. It's too much power of me. You got too much power over your life, over your happiness. Can't allow it. Can't let it go. Forgive and move on. Forgive and move on. It's hard. It's hard. Some things are harder than others. And I understand that things cut deep. I, I get that. But there's things that you just have to let go. There's there's no other way. Or think of it this way, this way. Flip side. You take vengeance in your own hand. You do something you end of business. Now where you at for the rest of your life? Great. Yeah. Or dead. And you're not you're not worth more than that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I young I, I know I am, but sometimes you feel me. I just I don't think about all that. I just but that's what do. you need to do from the, that's what you need to do from this point forward. You need to think about what you're about to do. The rest of your life depends on it. The rest of your life depends on it. The rest of your life depends on it. Makes sense. The rest of your life depends on it. Anything else? Yeah, some questions out here. Um, what do you charge for a regular haircut? <laughs> Kiss <Kiska. laughs> 20. <laughs> okay. What demographics comes into your barbershop? Oh. How are your employees paid? Do they pay a percentage or a chair? A booth front chair. How <laughs> much money do you make yearly? <laughs> Next question. Who <laughs> <laughs> wants to know if he works for you? Would he be renting a space or chair, or just be working for you? <laughs> what position did you play in football? Right back. Have you cut any celebrities' hair? Uh, no. Do you have another plan if your shop fails? Uh, yeah, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of support did your family give you while you were locked down? Very minimal. Um, truthfully, to be honest with you, um, hardly not. Hardly not. That girl that y'all think is your girl? <laughs> She's everybody's now. <laughs> Very minimal. So. Just to let you know. There is nothing. You're probably, truthfully, guys are honest truth. I guarantee these girls make it tough. 
you probably had one, possibly two true friends your entire life. And Miss Adam, I'm sure she can. You don't really have them. Those riders, oh, I'm a ride. I'm a ride with you. I'm riding for my man. Come on, they'd be the first to tell me. They'd be the first to sit there and say, "He did that." I was just walking down the street. He sold that. He stole that. He put the gun to it. I didn't know he was about to do it. <laughs> Trust me. Jesus. Trust me. That's crazy. Everybody's not your friends. Everybody's not your friends. As you sit there, the homies on the block, and that's my man. I'm riding with him. It's not reality. It's just not reality. Sometimes it look like that because they like it. Like, I mean, it, it feels look like that because you think like, they blow for you like uh, it might it might seem like they blow for you like they might be going for themselves, but it seem like they going for you. You get you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's feel like it's just sometimes you get caught you're like ah, it's my boy. He just blow that for for what he think. Yeah, I just blow that for myself. Absolutely, and that's how it's going to be. Believe that. That's exactly how. It's going to be. When I was getting in trouble, <coughs> um, my so-called friends, one 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 of my so-called friends guy robbed him, so I said, I'm gonna get him back. So I went and I tried to get him here, I'm shooting at this guy. At the end of the day, I realized this guy who I'm shooting at, him, chasing the shooting at, never hit, but the same person that he robbed shook his hand. Wait a minute, he just shook his hand. But I could have did the rest of my life for you. Yeah. That's when I cut friends off. That's when I cut people off. It might be a different situation, but the ending result was going to be the same. The streets does not get back. I'm telling you, I, I, on everything I love, the streets don't get back. You can ride for your man if you want, but I guarantee you won't be sadly mistaken. Guarantee you. I guarantee you. Neighborhood stuff, all that, I guarantee you. A matter of time, right circumstances, you'll go before he did. Right, right. It just, it just seemed like it just seemed it just, that's the operative word. It seems like it, but it's not reality. See, in your mind, it's a vision like, man, he my man is gonna hold me down. Your man is not gonna hold you down. Believe me, believe me. I'm not saying you don't have love for him, but I say you can't commit crimes, bro. That's what I'm telling you. You can't commit crimes, period. That's what I'm telling you. You just, you got to do the right thing. You got to walk the line. Nobody's living your life but you. You won't let someone else dictate your life. That's allowing somebody to dictate your life. Y'all do crime together, you're allowing that. He said, yo, let's go rob this bank. Let's go stick this dude up. You, you're allowing that. Because you're not thinking about the flip side. You're not thinking about what could go wrong. Got think about the worst side before you think about the good side. No, you just don't do it. I mean, you, you're a rationale kind of guy, but just don't do it, right? Yeah. Then you don't even got to think about it. Makes sense to me. Well, what if somebody else want to on me? That's what the law was for. So, okay, let's talk about it. He slumped your home, right? Yeah. So you want to go get him, right? Now you go get him. You're home dead, right? Now you in jail for the rest of your life. Does it make sense? Or could you help his family being home? Right. Okay. Think about it. Just don't do it. That's where the rules, the regulation comes from. That's where the law comes from. That's where that's why we have priorities and you know, we gotta just, just gotta think. Protocol. Let the, let the law do their job. That's what they're here for. They're human too, though. But that's what they're here for. How long were you locked up for? Total, uh, four and a half years total combined. Too much time, right? Back and forth, too much. You know why? Let me tell you. Let me see the back. Let me tell you what the back and forth is. The back and forth is, I can do it better next time. 
That's forward thinking. I can do it better next time. Think about that. I can find a way to commit a crime better. That don't make sense, though. No. Absolutely not. It's like two left shoes, right? No, you caught it. Let me tell you. It's like two left shoes. Right? Yeah. Don't make sense. Uh, were you ever harassed by the police based on your past life? Um, yeah, at the beginning I was. When I first got out, when I, on my way of getting out of trouble, trying not to look back, they knew who I was, so they would, they would bother me. They would bother me all the time. They would bother me because they knew what I used to be. They would bother me because they said, yeah, you know, this is, this is who he is, and I know him, and I know what he used to do. I used, to, I used to come at me so hard because I knew I carried guns. So a couple of times I could have just died to something because they knew who I was. I, I mean, how did you deal with it? I had to deal with it. One or two, I'm living, at that point I'm living a simple life now. I'm just going to work and I'm just living a life. So them harassing me, it didn't even matter to me at that point because I knew I wasn't doing nothing wrong. Nine times out of ten, you scared and running because you just you, you know you did something wrong. Yeah. This is why I didn't I didn't care. Before I, I used to drive scared to death. But now I, I mean then I didn't I didn't care once I started doing the right thing because now I'm doing the right thing. I'm not getting in trouble. So how you got to beat though? Like you can you, you you had a beat right mm -hmm. and you got out and you said you changed your life, you ain't carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. And they pull up on you, you feel you can't you do nothing. Change your environment. If you stay in the same, if you know that you was in the, if you know that you was going to the corner and you was fighting every single time, go to the opposite corner. Change your environment. No, it doesn't make you a chump. All these other words that I could use, it doesn't make you any of those things. It just makes you a person that's thinking rational now. I don't want trouble. That's what you, that's what it is. You don't want trouble. I just want to live life. And listen, listen, I'm not here to paint a fairy tale picture to you all. Trouble will find you. But at the end of the day, you do your part in minimizing it. You do what you need to do to stay away from it. That's that's what you do. That's that's your right. That's what you do. You you get away from it, change your environment, change your action, change your thinking, your behaviors. Right? Yeah, listen, little bro. The only way you're going to get out of those things is if you change who you are, your environment. You got to change the outlook. You got to change how you think of yourself. You're not, listen, you're not this street dude. You won't ever be a street dude. But it doesn't make you a bad dude. It doesn't make you a corny dude because you're not a street dude. That's fairy tale believing. This is why your mind staying trapped in that thinking of riding for these dudes. Business for these guys, getting back at these people. That's not your life. That's not who you are. Don't let this dictate your future. Don't don't leave and go back to the same environment that if you can help it and find yourself in the same situation. That's senseless. This is what you do. When you see trouble and you find yourself that you want to that you want to do something foolish, think about the time you spent here. How long have you been here? Oh, I, I've been locked up for once. I've been good for a while. Okay, how long have you been locked up, period? All life, like combining all. Everything. Going back and forth about three years. About three years. So you wasted three years of your life in this situation. Listen, you wasted three years of your life in this situation. Imagine wasting the rest of your life in this situation. Make sense? Change your environment, change your thinking, change your people. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, at the end, you, you may not even remember me, but you'll remember the decisions that you chose not to make for the better. And that's all that matters to me. You don't even have to remember my name. You don't even have to remember that I stood there. But what I want you to remember is that you chose not to do the wrong thing, so you're living good today, that day. Make sense? Just choose to do the right thing. You got, you got the rest of your life, but you can do whatever you want. Whatever it is that you want. But forward thinking and those mistakes are going to stop. Tell me.
Okay. Two classes want to know if you have time to stop by and see them in person. Sure. Okay, and now we move on to... Oh, a student wants to know what kind of watch you are wearing. So <laughs> 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 One of my favorites, I love the watches. You want to let them see it? Okay. Here you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fun. All right. Um, I'm sure this is a question. What year did you attend and play at Chain? Yeah, I went '96. Okay. What made you want to come talk to us? Because I was once you. I was once you. When I look at you all, I look at myself. I made tons of mistakes. Tons of mistakes. Lord knows I made tons of mistakes and will make them to this day. So much so I made I made a mistake turning it into somewhere else. That was just a joke, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> I made tons of mistakes. You understand what I'm telling you? I knew you you're my I made these same mistakes. When she asked me to come, I jumped at the opportunity. I made the same mistakes. Yours may not be mine, mine may not be yours, but they're the same mistakes that get us here. It's the same mistakes. I'm pleading. I'm begging. You don't have to do it. You don't. You don't have to be this. This is not the end of your life. This is just not the end. You don't have. You don't have to. Just don't have to. I can say it to them blue in the face when I'm black. You don't have to. Meaning, it's game probably not, not my race. <laughs> <laughs> Could you just emphasize a little bit more the importance of them choosing different friends and different yes. environments and making that change? I know it has to happen. It has to happen. So much so, your life depends on it. Your life depends on your environment and how you change it. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. I don't know why I'm speaking so hard to you, but your life depends on it. Yeah. You understand what I'm telling you? Your friends, the, the mistakes you make, the choices you make, your life depends on it. I, I promise you, I promise you on everything I love, your life, you have to change these people. Because listen, we're creatures of habits. Humans are just creatures of habit. That means that if we don't find something else that, that grabs our attention to move us in the right direction, we're only going to go back to the things that we're familiar with. We're only going to go back to the things that we're familiar with, even get in trouble, even that you know that it gets you in trouble, but because we're so familiar with it, and we're so comfortable in that environment, we'll go right back to it. But you have to get out of your comfort zone. That's the only way you're going to progress is if you get out of your comfort zone. So you think if you go around the corner and you stop hanging with these dudes, you won't have other friends or you won't be thorough or cool enough to deal with anybody else. Yeah, I know, but get out of your comfort zone. Go, go deal with another race of people. Go deal with other friends. Go deal with whoever. Go pick up a book. Go, go swimming. Go, you ever play golf? Go play golf. <laughs> no, it's funny, but I'm telling you, change your environment. You have to change your thinking. If you stay in the same situation, the same mindset, you're going to stay in the same situation. Because we're creatures of habits. We will go back. We will go back. And I knew I would go back if I didn't have something bigger than me, which is my little. This is why I went homeless, because I didn't want to go back, because I looked at her eyes every time I turned around, and I understood that I needed to take care of her first. I had to put her first. There's things that think, people that you have to put before yourself, and half the time we don't do it. We put ourselves first. This is why we find ourselves in the same situation because we worry about self until you get in trouble. Then you're calling out to everybody that you don't turn your back to. You got to think about other people too. It's not just you. I was I was in the street. I was in the street. I was so addicted to the money more than the fame was addicted to the drug. So I was chasing that. I was chasing it. I was chasing until I got in trouble and I really wanted them to be there. But because I turned my back on them so hard, they was like, why should I? When you was on top, you didn't care about me. That was a reality check for me. You have to change how you think. You have to change your environment. You have to change those things that you do or you're going to find yourself back 
All it takes is something familiar to what you're used to. You won't go right back to the same thing. So you got to change how you think. What is like? What do you got a choice to like? I, like this say my boys come up my house like boom. My first day out, and my boys come up like boom. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Are you more concerned with your freedom or what they think? My freedom. There's your answer. Let's go smoke this weed. Let's go start this do. No, you want they gonna give you some time. I'm sure they give you some type of probation after this, I'm sure. So what they do is, I know, but I was there. So what they do is they sit there and take you, they give you a tell, they give you a long tail of probation, hoping that you jump. But what chances are they thinking by the way you speak, they know that you are. So we won't give you a long tail so that you can make the mistake so that you because you know why? Because they feel like you will not learn your lesson. You have to prove them wrong. Give me what you want. I'm going to learn the lesson because I'm going to do the right thing. So you go with your homies and small as some cracks, and now you're back here wishing that you never went with your friends. Why wish you never went with them when you can just not be with them? Choose you over them. And when I say choose you, your freedom, your happiness, your being, your well-being, you over them. Choose you over them. Light switch. They're going to control everything you do. No, choose you over them. Choose you over them. Your life depends on it. Your life. De where are your homies at now? Honestly, honestly where, are they, where are they? Home? I, I know. They're in the hood. Still in the hood. Where are you at? I don't know. So, so, does it make sense? And besides the fact, regardless of what they're doing, they could still be in the hood. They could be locked up. But why do you have to be? Why do you have to get in trouble? Why? You don't have to. Choose you over them. Choose you over them. That's the answer to your question. Choose you over them. When you go go back to your room, say, I'm choosing me over them. When you get out of there, I'm choosing me over them. Over my circumstances. I'm choosing myself over my circumstances. If you don't choose you over your circumstances, you will be back in your situation. Where I'm sure at night you cry in your pillow. Nobody has to know what you do. <laughs> and all of you too. Sure you do. There was a time where when they shut that door on you. Okay. Well, we're not going to go there. I keep the real idea. I know you don't worry about it. Me and you both. But what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you is this here. This is what I'm saying to you. It's not about being tough. It's about this is where you don't want to be. That's what it's about. Period. I'm not, it's not about being tough. I cried in mine. Yeah, I'll cry too. Yeah, just like you, I'll cry too. Why? Because I didn't want to be there. I had to change my mindset that I can't keep doing these things or, or I'm going to be here. Change your thinking. Choose you over them. Choose you. Choose you over this. I think when this is done, you won't say farewell to them. They still got a job to do. They even can see you come back. Or they can shake your hand and, and wish you farewell and you truly live a good life and move on. But you gotta make the decision. You have to make the decision to choose you over them. Forget your homies. Love them from a distance. There's family members you have, you love them from a distance, you, you know what I mean? You you love them, hey, how you doing? Good to good to hear you click. That's it, right? <laughs> Cousin, long lost cousin, you ain't seen him in years. Hey, you love him, but you don't talk to him. It's all right. I can see it out here. Choose okay. you over there. I want all y'all to think about when y'all go back. I don't know how long I have been in the same world, but when you go back to your room at nighttime, when you lay there and it's quiet, somebody will be making noise, but it's going to be quiet inside your mind and for the most part anyway. And you're laying there, you're thinking about it. Think about if this could, that this possibly could be the rest, the rest of your life living like this. Think about that. Think about how this really could be your reality for the rest of your life. No, 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 you know, no good corner pizza shop, pizza, no Chinese food, no, no jerk chicken. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, none of that. None of that. No, not, 
Do they, they even give you a, they don't even give you knives, right? Forks, right? Spork, uh, yeah, nice sports. Sports. right? That's my hit. But uh, no utensils. And your own clothes. Your own clothes. You can't even look in your own refrigerator, your own bed. You understand what I'm saying? You dripping milk all down your chin. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, understand, do you understand what I'm saying to you, though? It's, it's reality. It's reality. That, that, that could be one mistake. You, we, we're all one mistake away from a decision that can cost me for the rest of my life. One decision. So, honestly, you have to be on your P's and Q's all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. You have to make conscious decisions of doing the right thing all the time. What I say earlier, your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on it. Choose you over them. Choose you over them circumstances. At the end of the day, you y'all can be whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. Whatever you set your mind to, that's not you. Yeah, that's not false. That's not false. When I first thought about opening a barbershop, and I was getting my hair, I sat there and watched the barber that owned that used to cut my hair. Well, I don't know that, but I used to say to him, I said, look at him, and I used to say, yo, man, I want to open my own. He's like, man, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Four barbershops later, I sold one and got 20000 for it. It's not a whole lot of money, but that's good money. You understand what I'm saying? Twenty thousand. Yeah, I sold. I sold a barbershop for twenty thousand dollars. What? Come on. You can do whatever you want. Whatever you want, man. You can own your business. You go. Write the check. You don't have to receive it. Write the check. Write the check. How many believe that they can write a check? That you be able to write a check to somebody? You too. You can write a check to somebody. You can own your own business and write the check. Write the check. Be your own boss. Be the boss. I'm done. I just, I just like to encourage you all. I, I pray that that you become bigger than your circumstances at all costs. I pray that you change your mindsets. I pray that you change your environment. I pray that you change the people you choose to be around. You're thinking. If you don't have a plan to something, you're gonna go back to what you used to and you won't fail at it. And if you, you won't you won't have nothing to go run back to. You'll run back to what you're used to, is what I'm saying. You'll run back to what you're familiar with. You'll run back to the very thing that makes you comfortable. And being on a block on the stoop with your homies makes you comfortable. It used to make me comfortable. I got out of my comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Get away from my credit, you just change your mind. Change the way you think. Pray for us. I will not pray for you now, believe it or not. I want one day for, if not all of you, some one of you to stand here and say, you know what, I, I should be like you. Yeah, I made mistakes too. This is why it, it does my heart well to even look into your eyes and talk to you and say, listen, I know each and every last one of you could be something to make it. I know you can. I don't care what anybody else might have told you. I can care less. But at the end of the day, choose you over your circumstances, over your life. Choose you over them. No matter who, what the them is, no matter what that situation is, choose you for the better at all costs. Because at the end of the day, you got to pay for that mistake. You can be with 50 homies, but you won't be the only one paying for the mistake. You know why? Because when the sale closes, you're the only one there. They could be wherever you're at, but you're the only one there. So, I appreciate y'all. I respect and I pray that y'all go forward in life and, and, change, and turn this thing around, which I know you all can, because I see it in you. I see me, I see you, I see me, I see you. How was you? So, appreciate y'all. Thank you.